Hey guys and Merry Christmas! Today we're gonna take a look at this advanced calendar with a little bit of electronics to play around with. Without further ado, let's dig in! It's supposed to be a green diode in there, but it's missing unfortunately. Alright, so I got a diode from my Arduino kit and I got some batteries. So day one is just get the diode to light up and it's not working. So after breaking two of these diodes with too much current because I directly connected them to the battery pack, I realized that the diodes in this kit actually have an inbuilt resistor, which these diodes that I took from another kit, they don't have that. So I need to add a resistor to the circuit and um, only then it is safe to plug the diodes in. There we go. Oh, so it lights up. So in day two, you add a little switch. So yeah, that works. In day three, we get a condenser. And with condenser, I mean capacitor, I'm sorry. Condenser is just the directly translated word from German. This one has a capacity of 100 microfarad and it's actually important which way around you plug it in. So with the capacitor in place you can see that the LED stays on for like a fraction of a second longer, but it's barely noticeable. Right, in day 4 we get another switch and a loudspeaker. So with this setup we are first charging the capacitor and you can see that it's charged once the LED is only glimming very lightly. Then we discharge the capacitor through the loudspeaker but you can't really hear the noise because the switch here um, pressing it down is actually louder than the noise that comes from the loudspeaker. But I can feel a little vibration in here. In day 5 we get a wire, a resistor and a integrated circuit. Right, so I installed everything and the loudspeaker is hooked up to the power source and once I touch this wire you can actually hear uh, some noise coming out of it. Over to day 6, where we get a ceramic capacitor. This capacitor has a capacity of 100 nanofarad, so this one is a thousand times smaller than that one. And the cool thing is with ceramic capacitors, it doesn't matter which way around you put it. Up to day 7, that's over here. So today we got a 15 kilo ohm resistor that uh, we connect across here, but it doesn't really change anything. Let's take a look at day 8 now. So in here we are finding a trimmer and we need to modify the circuit again. There we go. Right, that's pretty cool for so far. Let's check out day nine. Another resistor is going in here. And let's see what it does to the circuit. Not much to be honest. Let's check out day 10. These are just um, small steps really. Day 10 there's another resistor and we're gonna rewire it. So now it's not cutting off anymore. When I unplug it, 
Oh, well, <laughs> there's no connection then. When I unplug it and replace it with a just a wire, then it's cutting off again. But it goes a bit higher. Interesting. Let's keep on going then. Day 11. That's another capacitor. Ceramic one. And we can instantly hear the sound changing. Number 12. This one goes over here. Again, it's the same reading, 100 nanofarad, and this one goes right in the middle. Right, day 13. I had to unplug it for a second. Today we're getting a sound processor, and this one is actually pre-programmed. It's got an integrated circuit on here on the board and a lot of pins that we can address. So I'm gonna switch over the circuit, plug it in and see what happens. Ah, oh, shit. Right, so I had a hard time getting this one in there because um, maybe you can see it here there is actually one step or one space in between here and I thought it needs to go in there so I bent all the pins and therefore I almost broke the board so don't make that mistake if you get this calendar leave one space here and I had um, to use quite a bit of gentle force to get it back into place so yeah now it's in and it stays there Okay, so as we can hear, the soundboard is now switching two frequencies back and forth and uh, up to the point where we cannot hear one frequency anymore. So it's pretty much creating a pulse. Day 14. Whoa. <laughs> We're getting another soundboard. No, another breadboard that attaches right here and the whole circuit gets extended. All right, so here we can see that these buttons now alter the frequency at which the frequency of the oscillator is switched. Day 15, another one with 100 microfarads. So day 16, we added this one. Day 17, get another potentiometer. Okay, so now I hooked everything up, but um, the whole thing got very, very quiet. You can barely hear it. So um, I hope in the next steps it's gonna be amplified again. Next up, we're gonna build the casing.
Right, so while that's drying over there, let's keep on building the synthesizer. Day 18. While installing the parts, my camera died, but um, yeah, this is what happens. So we got an amplifier function over here, and then the frequency again. So I'm gonna turn this up. <laughs> Sounds a bit weird. Um, and also we got a filter. Yep. And let's move over to day 19. On day 19 we're getting another ceramic capacitor and it goes in here. On day 20 we're getting some LEDs and these are the ones that have the resistor built into them so they don't break when you apply 5 volts to them. Right, so day 20 didn't really work. There's supposed to be a sequence of the lights here, but it doesn't work. I checked everything twice. Don't know, maybe I damaged the circuit board here. I'm not sure. I'm gonna continue with day 21. There's a third potentiometer in it, and that one goes here. Again, no real effect with that one. I'm gonna continue with day 22, and then in the end, I'll see if I can fix some things. So this button is supposed to save the current pattern, but again, doesn't work, so I'm gonna move on to the next one. Day 23, another button. So now uh, this thing seems to be working. I don't know why, <laughs> to be honest, but... Um, Let's check out day 24. Right, we get some more LEDs. Let's put them in. Right, I think I put everything in correctly. Let's check it out while connecting the power. I should press and hold these buttons. Right, so I glued the speaker into the box and I played around with it for a while. Now I'm gonna show you two different modes to operate this in. I found them to be most interesting. So to switch a mode, you are going to unplug and replug the power cable. So now this is in synthesizer mode. Oh no, I'm wrong. This is actually the Atari Punk console. I found though that um, with the second one plugged out, it actually sounds better. So I'm gonna unplug this one. And that's just noise. Yeah, that's pretty much the Atari Punk console. So the second mode that I found interesting was the three oscillator mode. I'm gonna press one and two together and power it. Now we got three oscillators that are interfering with each other.
So one other mode that I really wanted to show you is the step sequencer mode, but I couldn't make it work. For some reason I cannot dial in the pitch value and the duration of the tones, so I can't really cycle through these, um, what is it, 256 steps that you could sequence with this. So this would be pretty cool, but unfortunately it doesn't work. I've been fiddling around with it for like two hours now. If you have any tips on that or if you build it yourself, uh, let me know in the comments. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. You can look at the schematic here. Uh, I think I've wired everything correctly, but um, then again, yeah, it's all right if it doesn't have that functionality. It was still a fun build. And this also leads over to my conclusion. So is it worth it? Yes and no, I would say. So on the one side, I had quite a bit of fun building it and also a bit of headache. But on the other hand, the missing functionality of the step sequencer, or let's say the fact that it doesn't work intuitively, is a bit of a disappointment. All in all, I spent a few hours with this and it was actually nice and relaxing. But I would not recommend this as an advent calendar because it really only makes sense if you build it in one go. Sometimes I think these steps with like another capacitor or another resistor, they would be very boring for a kid or um, teenager who would like to, you know, dabble in electronics um, and then just get one resistor. And also the fact that you always have to unplug and um, reset the board. There was quite a bit of movement and you always ha have to hit the right spots here and there. That seemed a bit unnecessary because I wanted to get familiar with the overall architecture of the final product so that I can better understand it. And while switching everything around all the time, it was quite a bit difficult to really um, keep track with what's actually going on in the electronic components. With that being said, I hope this little project inspired you or at least didn't bore you to death and make sure to like and subscribe for more interesting projects that are coming up on this channel. I hope you have a nice end of the year and see you next time. Bye.